turning to the Supreme Court showdown. Judge Brett Kavanaugh's accuser now open to testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Thursday. President Trump weighing in on the controversy last night on Hannity. I think it's a very sad situation. He's an outstanding person. And frankly, Sean, to see what's going on is, is just very, very sad. You say, why didn't somebody call the FBI 36 years ago? I mean, you could also say, when did this all happen? To take a man like this and be smart. Now, with that being said, let her have her say, and let's see how it all works out. But I don't think you can delay it any longer. I have been accommodating. I say, let her say what she has to say, and let's see how it all comes out. But they've delayed it a week and they have to get on with it. She says it's attempted rape. Attempted rape under Maryland law, you'll pardon, I have to be specific, requires a specific intent to penetrate. There's no evidence, even in her allegation, of that. Look, men and women are not born with a gene for telling the truth or lying. These senators who say, I believe her, or the others who say, I believe him, nobody is in a position to believe or disbelief, let's hear her, let's hear him, let's hear other witnesses, let's see them, let's see their attitude, let's determine their credibility. Then we can say, I believe. The idea that you always believe a man or always believe a woman is the most blatant form of sexism. You're being too logical, Al. <laughs> Good of you to be here. Good morning. Always, Good morning. Uh, always a pleasure. One of the requirements based on what her lawyers are asking for in order to have her appear before the Judiciary Committee is that Brett Kavanaugh goes first. Is this a hurdle? Every civil libertarian in the country, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, led by the American Civil Liberties Union, should be outraged at this demand. It is so un-American. You're the accuser. You get on the witness stand, you testify, you make your accusation, you get cross-examined, then the accused responds. It turns the entire legal system on its head. It is insane to ask an accused person to deny the accusation before he has heard the accusation being made and cross-examined. Sure, the FBI should continue its background check. They should also call everybody else who may have been at this uh, party. All of that is true, but the idea that he goes first I want to hear from the American Civil Liberties Union. Where are they? This is the most fundamental denial of due process. So do you think that the Senate Judiciary Committee would never agree to these terms? Never. It would be outrageous to put the person who's being accused on the witness stand first and say, would you please deny what we think we may have heard in a newspaper? There's a letter. We're not even going to show you the letter to Senator Feinstein. Now, I can't say everything's truthful. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Right. But now, set out your argument, set out your case. I would never in a million years allow a client to be subjected to a kangaroo court like that. But that you're kind of getting at the essence of this. This is no longer a confirmation hearing. It's turning into what feels and looks like is a criminal trial. Well, Rachel Maddow says, put him in jail. Impeach him. There's no statute of limitations. She says it's attempted rape. Attempted rape under Maryland law, you'll pardon, I have to be specific, requires a specific intent to penetrate. There's no evidence, even in her allegation, of that. Look, Men and women are not born with a gene for telling the truth or lying. These senators who say, I believe her, or the others who say, I believe him, nobody is in a position to believe or disbelief. Let's hear her. Let's hear him. Let's hear other witnesses. Let's see them. Let's see their attitude. Let's determine their credibility. Then we can say, I believe. The idea that you always believe a man or always believe a woman is the most blatant form of sexism. You're being too logical, Al. <laughs> You're using your legal brain. Again, this is, a, this is about um, hysteria, hysteria all around. Well, that's what lawyers have to do and stop hysterica. And, and that's what the ACLU for years did. No more. They make so much money now on being anti-Trump. They have forgotten about civil liberties. So I know that we're talking about a lifetime appointment here, so it's a little bit different. But what would normally happen in a case where you're talking about two minors and, and it's decades later? Because I believe he was 17, she was 15. So what would be normal precedent under these circumstances? Number one, almost every state has what's called 
called a Romeo and Juliet law. So if you have 15 year old and a 16 and a 17 year old, it's generally not treated as a uh, felony of the kind if it was a 40 year old man and a 15 year old girl. That's number one. Number two, I have to tell you, I've practiced law for 55 years. I have never heard of a case like this criminally being reopened after 35 years. It would be the first time, as far as I know, in American history, probably world history, that anything like this has led to a criminal investigation. Only in the world of, uh, you know, radical extremists would you ever even hear a suggestion of a criminal prosecution. So the, the accuser's legal team insists that this process is moving too quickly. And clearly Democrats in the Senate have a strategy to delay, delay, delay until, you know, perhaps the elections mm -hmm. happen and we're moving on to 2020. What is the appropriate time frame here? Because you just mentioned we do have to do all these interviews. We have to conduct some sort of investigation. Is pushing this to next week, is that still too quick? Or have Republicans pursued an appropriate time? Both frame? sides are wrong. There should be no time frame. We shouldn't be concerned about the election. Mm -hmm. We should be concerned about finding the truth. However long it takes to make sure she testifies, the other witnesses have put on the stand, subpoenaed if they have to be, the FBI conducts its investigation. Remember, the FBI has no jurisdiction criminally in this right. case because it took place in Maryland, but they do have the power to do background checks. They're not supposed to make credibility determinations, but they're supposed to gather all the evidence, give it then over to the Senate. Let the process unfold. Mm. Let there not be a deadline. If it happens before the election, so be it. If it happens after the election, so be it. But politics shouldn't determine the outcome of this investigation in terms of timing. Well, the Senate Judiciary Committee actually said this on Twitter yesterday they have a statement from mark judge the the other man allegedly in the room at this party they have a statement under penalty of felony there's a third person allegedly at the party they have a statement under penalty of felony and they also contacted a fourth a, a fourth person who was a schoolmate who um who has made some allegations mm -hmm. on social media so again there is an what however you want to characterize it an investigation going on with by the people within the senate but that's judiciary. not good enough you have to ask this guy, Judge, why did you initially say you don't remember, and then why did you say, oh, it didn't happen? You have to be able to confront him with his inconsistencies, too. Look, everybody here has to pass the shoe on the other foot test. If this were a liberal Democrat who had this allegation being made against him, oh, by the way, we have such a case. We have Keith Ellison, who has a spousal abuse or a domestic abuse case against him. Where are the Democrats on that? The same standard has to apply to Democrats and Republicans. You can't have one system of justice for one party and another system for another party. I just want to see a fair process applied to everybody across the board. And I don't care whether it helps the Democrats or Republicans. I want to make sure the rule of law is preserved. Well, the she has to testify. And look, nobody should be referring to her as a victim or him as a perpetrator until we hear from both of them under oath, subject to cross-examination. There is nothing more essential to American justice than the opportunity to cross-examine your accuser, to confront your accuser. It's in the Constitution. Essentially, it goes back to Magna Carta. The idea that we're calling somebody a perpetrator and somebody else a victim based simply on he said, she said, is just wrong and it's un-American. She should testify. They should also call in judge and any other witnesses who were at the party, who claim they weren't at the party. Sure, let them broaden it beyond the two of them. Kind of, if, let's assume, there, if, if, for the sake of this discussion, if there was illegality and there's no evidence uh, that Dr. Ford said there is, Brett Kavanaugh says there's not. That's not the, the FBI doesn't investigate that. What do they do? They do background checks. Now, this information is already public. So I think the appropriate thing to do here is to allow Dr. Ford to have the opportunity to address her allegations in a setting that she's comfortable with, whether it's publicly or privately, under oath. Jay, who's a great lawyer, is partly right and partly wrong. They have no jurisdiction to investigate a crime, but they do have jurisdiction to uh, do a background evaluation. A background evaluation, I know we've all been asked, people come to you and say, do you know him? Uh, what do you think of him? They can do a background evaluation, but they can do it after her testimony. It makes much more sense for her to testify. She's not going to learn anything new from the FBI investigation. Her testimony won't change based on the FBI investigation. She testifies. If she provides new information, the FBI can look into it then. You know, but you started out by saying very specifically how the Constitution works and how right. that is quite clearly being ignored here. Just to give you the extent of the rhetoric that is out there right now, here is a host on The View talking about this. Watch. Mm -hmm.
men are supposed to protect I you too. from these predatory males. I do too. And they're not doing that. And believe you. On the you. contrary, well, we have this, to... these people in Congress right now, in that Senate Judiciary Committee, these white men, old, by the way, mm -hmm. are not protecting women. They're yeah. protecting a man who is probably guilty. You know, first of all, probably guilty isn't good enough under our system. And second, there's no indication other than her word that he's probably guilty. He may be. We have to know that. It's important. We don't want somebody the on the Supreme she's Court. The point is that he's guilty and has to prove himself innocent. Look, now. that's what's happened today uh, with the Me Too movement. In fact, in many respects, men are denied even the opportunity to prove their innocence. In colleges today, in universities, <clears throat> it's enough for a preponderance of the evidence. That means 51 percent. That means 49 out of every 100 people accused on a college campus and convicted may well be innocent. Um, you heard whispers about this report in early August. Yeah, there how were many, there how many rumors. You, how many people do you think heard about these rumors then? You know, Capitol Hill is a place of rumors. Um, a number of people heard these rumors. They were very unspecific. And the word was, don't worry about it. It's gotten into the hands of the right people. And if there's anything to it, it will come out. But people knew about this on Capitol Hill well before the first stories appeared in the newspapers.